auswendig. Ich ihn gewinnt, like. Are we live? Of course we're live. People deluded. I'm back again. Thank you very much for tuning back in each and every time. Big up the Twitch gang. One love to everybody that's tuning in. Shout out to everyone watching this on the replay and things as well. But yeah, if you're locked in live, big shout outs to you as usual, whoever you are, wherever you are. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and of course, good night. Hopefully everyone's got their health physically, mentally, spiritually. I extend that to your loved ones. With it being Thursday, hope you've all had a week to remember. Hope you've even moved you know, if you just focus on moving 1% closer to your goals, hopes, dreams and aspirations every day, we'll all get there by the end of the year, people. So it is what it is. Hope everyone's well and safe. Hope everyone's in good spirits. So, yeah, man, obviously I'll be live on YouTube at 11.30. So open up and open up another another tab, head to YouTube and hit the like button and pattern up. But throughout the course of this, you know, I want to cover something in relation to Wilshere, sadly, Davy Brooks, you know, Hernandez could be facing jail, you know, Newcastle, you you know, they give me free content every day, really. There's something re related to Newcastle. So, yeah, hope everyone's in good spirits. Hope everyone's doing well and safe. Hope everyone's good. Obviously, big up the night, but subscribe. You know, I'll go on Mad Monkey. I'm good, man. I'm good. But like the night, but I said, make sure you're subscribing with Amazon Prime. It's completely free at no cost, and it helps support the channel. Obviously, if you're checking your DG merch, one love to everyone who's been copying that. Go and grab that. Nightbot's on a roll, man. Third message. For extra live streams and videos, make sure you subscribe on YouTube. As you know, YouTube, Twitch, Twitch, YouTube. We're trying to build an empire here, and, you know, one day it will happen, but we have to go bit by bit, brick by brick, and whatnot, man. S, appreciate you. Fun, JB, I appreciate you. G1, come on. Everybody locked in cam, appreciate you. Like, Every, even the people not commenting but yeah man obviously the topic was you know as I, I always say health like health 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 because it's sad to say obviously with what's been going on globally you know health is something that we all need to we cannot afford to take for granted it's something that actually in my personal life there's been a bit of tragedy a couple of you know it seems like just in my personal life me personally and f loved ones friends and families um no one can catch a break in it. So you really have to cherish it. You know, really, I think really have to have some gratitude because, yeah, it's not been a fun time. And it doesn't matter if you're old or young, it can happen at any time. And I'm sure you've all heard about Davy Brooks. Unfortunately, you know, he's been diagnosed with cancer. The good news before I read out the article, apparently it's been caught kind of early and it's a bit positive. I did a bit of research into this, this the cancer he has and it's, it's a rare sort of cancer and it typically gets people in their early 20s. And then obviously people... Um, 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 you know, in their early 20s and sometimes late 70s. So it sucks. And especially someone who's a footballer, you know, 23, 24 years of age, you know, it, it's, it's quite sad. The good thing is, is that it's been caught, you know, fingers crossed, everything crossed, every, you know, whatever God you really, you believe in, we're all keeping him in our hopes and, and, and prayers and things and wishing he makes a speedy recovery and can first and foremost forget football, just get back to living life um, at some stage. But He'll get through it. As a footballer, you need to have mental resilience. But nonetheless, it doesn't make it any more disappointing. And it was nice to see the messages pouring in for him from like Ramsdale, Wilshere, a couple other players and whatnot. Um, as you lot can see here, people, Wells and Bournemouth midfielder David Brooks has revealed he has been diagnosed with cancer. The 24-year-old said he has stage 2 Hodgkin um, lymphoma but that the pr prognosis is a positive one and he'll start treatment next week. So I, I guess that means chemotherapy. So he's going to obviously lose his hair. He's got 21 caps for Wales, obviously. And apparently he credits the Wales medical team for detecting the illness, he said. And then he said, you know, I'm sure you've all seen the Instagram. 100% mad monkey, man. Can never, can never take life for granted. Nothing in this world is owed to anyone, innit? Everything's a blessing, genuinely. And you really have to treat every day like it's this last, like it's our last. It's sad, but, you know, myself included, we'll say these things and then we go back to living in a bubble. But we really can't afford to do that because everybody thinks this isn't going to happen to them. And I hopefully it doesn't. But for me personally, I start, you know, it could happen to anyone. You know, for me, I've been to a lot of funerals in my life. And the, re the reason why I wanted to kind of achieve, you know, goals, hopes, 
dreams and aspirations and be someone and, and live life on my terms is because, you know, I was going to these funerals and then obviously you'll see someone born from whatever stage to whatever stage, you know, the, the programme will have whatever they've done in their life. And it made me think that's us one day, you know, whatever God you believe in, whoever you are, man, woman, whatever, we've all got, a, you know, we've all got a release date, you know, from this earth, really, whatever you believe in, we've all, you know, us, us, I believe our souls live forever, but this physical body, you know, is it, done at some point really and truly and it's like we're all going to be that one day so it's like you need to live life on your terms and I'm sure being a footballer he's done a lot of good and he's touched a lot of hearts and things like that but hopefully he's not done yet so yeah shout out to the Welsh team for Welsh team for detecting the such disease obviously positive that it seems to be a more positive diagnosis um, and yeah he starts treatment next week and he went on to say Although this has come as a shock to myself and my family, the prognosis is a positive one and I am confident that I will make a full recovery and be back playing as soon as possible. Um, as you lot know, it's a cancer um, lymphatic system and an important part of the immune system. So again, you know, it attacks the immune system. He also went on to say, I'd like to show my appreciation to the doctors, nurse, consultants and staff who have been treating me. Um, for their professionalism, warmth and understanding during this period. I want to thank everyone at the Football Association of, Association of Wales because without the swift attention of their medical team, we might not have detected the illness. I'd also like to say thank you to AFC Bournemouth for all their support and assistance this past week. Brooks has played nine times this season, people scoring three goals, but, you know, your career's on hold. This career's irrelevant at this moment in time. Although I appreciate that there'll be a lot of media attention and interest, I'd like to ask that my privacy is respected in the common months and I will share updates on my progress when I'm able to do so. In the meantime, thank you to everyone for their messages of support. It means so much and we'll continue to do so in the months ahead. I look forward to seeing you all again and playing the sport I love very soon. So yeah, man, we keep him in our thoughts, hopes, prayers and whatnot and wishing him, you know, a speed, the speediest of speedy recoveries and not just him, anyone that's suffering from any sort of disease and things like that. And especially, bef not that there's ever been any time for it, but for your time, man, but yeah, man, it is what it is where that's concerned. I, I don't know if the trim's still fresh, but I appreciate that. Um, yeah, man, it is what it is. Apparently, Hern I don't know what Hernandez has been doing. You know, I actually need to grab the article up. I just see he's been ordered by a Madrid court to return and things like that. Um, in fact, we might as well get into that one as well, people, in a second. But I need to find the actual article. I copied and pasted. Where is it now? What the hell did he? Ra man are violating restraining orders. Rah, this is sounding crazy, Lucas and Andy. You're moving mad, but we'll get into that in a second, man. It's early in the morning. I need to, I need to, I need to wake up a bit before I deep, deep the severity of that, man. Man said another player for prison FC teams looking certain. I don't know for all them. Well, Mendy, I'm telling you, Mendy ain't going to be part of no prison FC. None of them, man. They're them. And if they get convicted for the mad thing that they were doing, they're done at it. Really and truly. Cancer treatment is advanced nowadays. And if he's catched early, hopefully everything goes easy and a quick recovery. Facts, man. Facts, facts and more facts. Um, you know what? We might as well just get into this Lucas Hernandez thing. Sorry, folks. Let me make a quick timestamp. Um, Let's call it 15 minutes. So, yeah, Lucas, as you look could see, Lucas Hernandez, I don't know the specifics around this, but, yeah, man, he's been given a six-month jail term by, by a court in Madrid, so in Spain. I don't know what's for, but we're going to find out, people. And, yeah, a lot of footballers have been moving very crazy in the last couple of months, well, in particular. But Lucas Hernandez, French defender, gets six-month jail term. You know, just fresh off of winning something with his country. French international footballer and Bayern Munich defender Lucas Hernandez has been given a six-month prison term by a Spanish court for breaking a restraining order in 2017. Um, 25, you know, Hernandez, 25, must appear in, in court in Madrid on Tuesday. He has appealed against the sentence. Restraining orders had been imposed on him and his girlfriend, Amelia Uso, after a violent argument, but they were seen returning to Spain together after getting married. So... Yeah, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a mazer, isn't it? It seems like something happened between them two. The way it sounds to me is they've got a restraining order against each other. You know, they've they've I, I don't know, but they've become cool, and you know, they got the law. Don't care that you lot are cool. You still got laws to to uphold, and you know, you might have to hit the jailhouse. And I don't know if you know, being from France and being from Bayern, playing for Bayern Munich. Do you, unless they put some some Interpol thing out for you, really? Do you have to return to Spain? Like, just aired that, isn't it? Like six months in the trail, uh, it's a bit of a myth still. I'll be like, see you later. They like Spain anyways. But anyways, people, it sounds a bit mad. So yeah, they got married. They had a violent argument. It seems a, a absolute mad thing, you know. 
After his court appearance, Hernandez will have 10 days to report to prison voluntarily. He'll be allowed to choose the jail where he serves his sentence. Must be nice. You can, but he's probably going to choose the nicest of jails where they probably got PS7 in that, really and truly. He ain't going to hit the real jailhouse. But apparently, restraining orders were handed out after he and Miss Lorente had a fight in 2017. Although Neva had pressed charges, Miss Lorente was taken to hospital with minor injuries. Hernandez was convict convicted of domestic violence against, against her. Now, obviously, it doesn't need to be said. It, I don't condone any sort of domestic violence against anyone definitely against women you know it's not really spoken about in men but definitely don't don't with that it's a bit of a madness it's, it's, it's an absolute madness miss lorente also received a 31 day community service order i suppose for a violent assault and damage to property hernandez had been given a six month suspended prison term in 2019 for breaking his restraining order his appeal against it was denied so yeah man i don't know where we go from here with that but that's where it is in relation to Mr. Hernandez, people. He's moving mad, really. But it's just all, it's just all a madness. It don't matter if you're late, man. One love for tuning back in. Um, it's all it's all gravy, man. But psh, sounds mad. It's not the headline you expect to wake up to, you know. You know, but as I've said, Lucas Hernandez handed six month jail sentence. Must be nice to pick, be able to pick the jail. Man can go on Google and say, Yeah, that one, that one, that one is crazy, man. Having had cancer myself, it is the scariest news you can hear. They'll tell you the news, but you have no idea how it's going to go. And that's it, man. As someone that's seen it, like, thank God, that you know, I'm I, I'm happy, Dan, that you're still here, obviously. But as someone that's seen it with family members, like, cancer is it's a bastard. I've seen it rob people. Like, I've seen it, like, it's a mazza, man. It's, it's the hardest thing to watch. I can't lie to you. That, I'd say, in my life, that and I'd say dementia, two very things very hard to watch because cancer, you watch it break someone down. You watch them keep fighting. You know, obviously, my family members weren't, weren't successful in their fight. Hopefully, everybody else can be really and truly. It robs you of a lot. And obviously, dementia just robs you of your brain, in it? So they're the two toughest things. So anybody going through cancer. And the thing is, as well, it's draining, isn't it? Like, with respect to Brooks, I'm not going to say it's all right, but him being a professional footballer, you can get private treatment and all these things. I know people that have had to jump on the train every day to go and get their treatment and things. And as you know, as someone that's had it, it's it's not like you just go get an injection and you bust out, you know? It takes a lot out of you being on that trip and stuff. I've seen it. Like, it, takes a, it physically takes a lot out of you. So... Obviously, I hope it, you know, I hope he, he, he and not again, I don't want to just say David Brooks, anyone that's suffering with that, because, you know, I, I don't want to be a conspiracy theorist, but I just think they don't really and truly the world don't want to cure cancer in it because it's, it's very profitable, much like most diseases, really and truly. Um, yeah, man. Probably will. I'll be choosing the jail last way. Well, I'll be choosing the one with the shittest. I'll be choosing the one where you can get the, the shittest security, conjugal visits or whatever you call it. The loud needs to get in there. Bro, someone needs to be bringing me some curry goat and jerk chicken and rice. I'll be doing the most, man. I can't lie. If I could pick it like him, you know, find the GDs and that, click up with them and all these things. Like, it could be cool for Hernandez, man. It could all be cool, but it just sounds a bit mad what's going on there, man. It comes moving mad, <laughs> you know. Obviously, there's women here, so I don't want to move mad, but you're moving mad, cat cam man. And it's what like, you need to calm down, but it's 30 minutes past 10, my bro. AM, like, <laughs> but anyways, man, big up to all of you. Look, I think let's get into all of this. Um, Steve, Steve Bruce, and Brendan Rogers thing now. One minute you hear Brendan Rogers is, is cool to go Newcastle, they're willing to pay his, 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 his I don't want to say release clause, but pay up his contract at Leicester. Then you hear he don't want to. Then you hear he's on joining City. Apparently, Steve Bruce, it will cost eight million to get rid of him. And, you know, every day Newcastle are being linked with not just interesting footballers. I know, you know, they've been linked primarily Lingard, Martial, uh, Coutinho now, Fakir actually, um, and these things. But they're being linked with Luis Campos, you know, um, um, Antero Hernandez, you know, people that do things behind the scenes and can, are, are, and for me, more important than if, if, if Newcastle were to buy any player tomorrow. Now, don't get it twisted. Newcastle struggle for goals, so they probably need a striker immediately. I'd probably say some quality defenders. But I'm telling you, if they want to go and do the City thing, it's about what they do off the field. It's about how they revamp the system off the field. Again, look at City when it comes to this young player thing, making profits thing, all of these sort of things. They Off the field, if you care, take care of off the field, on the field will take care of itself, really and truly. And I do think in the next five to ten years, Newcastle could build a legacy, but it's about what you do today to get there. Um, 
You know, Ron weren't built in a day, but can you lay some bricks? So if we start off with the Brendan Rodgers thing, for what it's, for what it's worth, people, Brendan Rodgers is not interested in, in any potential Newcastle vacancy. Steve Bruce, as you guys know, is expected to be relieved of his duties. Um, and, you know, we've seen Brendan Rodgers linked with it. Conte, Lampard, Potter, you know, psh, give it a sec. Jose Mourinho, Vengo will get thrown in there again. You know, all, everyone and their nan's getting linked with it, people. So, yeah, it seems like Steve Bruce, he's still in charge, but it seems like his days are numbered. Allegedly, Rogers doesn't want to join. He's happy at Leicester um, and still believes he can achieve much. But again, surely you'd have more money to spend at Newcastle. And it does look like, I won't say the Leicester project is breaking, but, you know, Vardy's not going to be there forever. It looks like Telemans is getting cold feet. Fulfana's injured, but he's always flirt flirting with Real Madrid, you know. It could be something. And Rodgers has shown he'll bust out. Man left Celtic for Leicester quickly. Didn't give a crap, really and truly. Um, yeah, man. And he's led them to fifth place finishes twice. He's won an FA Cup. Obviously, they've bottled Champions League, if we're honest with yourselves. But he's done a lot for Rodgers. And he's the perfect man for the system, if you look at it. You know, Bruce has led Newcastle to 13th and 12th place finishes in his two seasons. But as you know, they sit bottom, second from bottom with just three points from seven games after a poor start this campaign. As I said, they've also been linked with Luis Acampos people, the man who turned Monaco and Leo into winners um, and doing his thing. So again, it makes sense that they're looking at people like this. And you've actually seen other articles saying they want someone like a someone of the ilk of a Tuchel, of a Pep, of a Klopp. So again, their chest is high. Whether they're going to get that is another thing. But um, it is what it is in that regards, people. What, what else is this? That's, that's that. Apparently, as you can, look, can see here, apparently Brendan Rodgers is to hold out for the Man City job. So does he think Pep Guardiola is going to keep it moving? After a while, I don't know, people. But let's see here. Uh, Brendan Rodgers, well, Leicester boss Brendan Rodgers, better yet, will ignore Newcastle interest. Boss Brendan Rodgers will ignore any approach from Newcastle as he believes he can succeed Pep Guardiola at Manchester City. Um, the Daily Mail reports that the ex-Liverpool manager would be on City shortlist to replace Pep if the Spaniard steps down as expected at the end of next season. So it could be, you know, he would be top of the list, really. You know, there's not too many names. But yeah, as you look and see here, he's willing to hold out for 18 months and I can't begrudge him for wanting to take the City job, especially after it didn't work out at Liverpool. You've had, you've gone to Celtic and Leicester since and, you know, you've done you've done your thing, really. So fair play. Um, Yeah, man, we'll actually keep this tab open because there's some other transfer news. As you look and see here, Bruce Sacken would cost around eight million quid. Um, What's what's this now? Well, that, that's something else. So, yeah, that's that in relation to Brendan Rodgers and things. So it, it doesn't appear that that is going to quite happen. Make sure you're following and all of those sort of things, people. Actually, please make sure you're following me on Instagram as well. Let's get that the followers up there. Why have I opened my calendar on my laptop? That was awkward. But, yeah, man, let's go all the way down. What's the latest on the investigation into the Newcastle buyout? What is there going to be, bro? Like, it's done. Like, people can bitch part of my language as much as they want. And I know that Amnesty wanted an inquest into it. But what can they do? It's done, bro. Like, there's nothing they can do now, surely. What can they tell them? Like, it's done. Like, it's literally done. So I think people can moan and say what they want, but it's done, isn't it? Like, clearly, what, rightly or wrongly, they've, pr they've passed the stress test of the Premier League for whatever reason. I know there's question marks in relation to human rights and the rest of it. But, yeah, man, I would say that. Minor cam, man. You're killing me, though, man. It's, it makes it funny as hell. So, yeah. Should we look at some of this transfer news as well, folks? Just because... Oh, did I delete it? I think I would get a bit of a donut, people. So, let's get... You know what? Let's get with this Phil Foden business quickly, folks. So, yeah, as you lot know, Phil Foden... One thing I, I admire any football club that gets contracts sorted. And Phil Foden is never going to be in a position at this moment in time where his deal is running down. There's talk of him signing a six-year deal and well-deserved, really. is the future of England and his club, really, as well as currently the present. Phil Foden agrees new six-year Manchester City contract that is likely to make him one of the best-paid youngsters in the world as a reward for his rapid rise under Pep Guardiola. He's made 130 appearances for the club since 2017. You know, remember when they said that he needs to leave City to grow? Boy, says it all, doesn't it, people? And he's still only 21 years of age and he's been around for donkey's years, really. 
Um, as you lot know, he was, oh gosh, he was on the shortlist. He was on the Ballon d'Or shortlist, probably gassing it a bit, but it is what it is, people. City have to tie down these sort of guys. City have tied down the boyhood supporter down to 2027 in a deal that is expected to be announced over the coming days and obviously make him well paid. And that's off the backdrop of Raheem Sterling and, and whatnot's contract in the background and a couple of others, people. Um, he did have a difficult start to the season with obviously recovering from an injury, but he's bounced back. He did well at Anfield. He obviously got an assist for England at the other the other day he signed that you know he signed the you know he signed a six-year contract in 2018 a heavily incentivized agreement that grew from his basic salary of 30k a week after triggering specific clauses and he must you know it's since then he's become an england regular and all these things he must be on over 100k a week really and truly so yeah man and obviously he's played in a bunch of positions he's going to be a future captain for that club a future leader and all of these things so it makes complete sense to tie him down and it must be nice uh, you know, I don't think he ever wants to leave right now because he's Mr. He's, he, you know, he's the Stockport Iniesta, as they say. But, you know, big up to Phil Foden for signing that deal. Bloody good footballer he is. So, yeah, long may it continue and all those sort of things for him. So it is where, it is where that's concerned, man. Footman said Foden is a poor man's Emil Smith Rowe. I'm here for the agenda. I'm here. Unfortunately, Amnesty will keep holding that L billionaires always win. Trust me, they can moan as much as they want, bro. It's done. Like, it's absolutely done. 150k per week, good value for money. This kid's the future, bro. Trust, future, present, all of that stuff, man. Phil Folden's ridiculous. Please make sure you're opening up another tab and you're obviously here at 11.30, you know, for extra live streams and videos. Subscribe to me on YouTube, as it says there. So it is what it is. Um, in relation to Jack Wilshire, I think he's given an interview in goal. So I think we might as well go over that, folks. He's opened up on his, on, on his return and I haven't read it yet, so I want to see it. Um, so before we carry on with that, you know, what we need to do is actually 2810. So yeah, put our timestamps in again. No, you cannot find a content creator more considerate for you guys than me, people. Big up to everyone who's watching the ads as well. I've been spinning the 30 second ones just for you lot. But he said, it feels like Arsenal will share opens up on Arteta, Edu and rejoining the Gunners. Rejoining, bit over strong, but anyways. After three years away from Arsenal, the 29-year-old is back at the club's London Coley training base, having been invited to train people. Trying to scroll away down just to the relevant parts and not the tosh. And as you lot can see here, that first day I trained with the first team, I've done that walk so many times before, but I hadn't done it in ages. And it was actually quite strange, quite surreal. And when asked about the training gear, he said, yeah, that was nice. It was a good, it was a good feeling when I first saw it hanging up and it was good to pull it back on. Um, scrolling all the way down. As you lot know, he's keeping up his fitness and ticking over at Arsenal as well as obviously completing his coaching badges. And he's obviously been seen at a couple of youth games and stuff. And he's actually put to bed rumours that he's retiring and things. And remember, you heard it first. I said Wilshere. Well, well, I think Wilshere could manage this club one day. I think he will work in our academy. And I think having not reached his full potential as a player, that will give him his extra drive as a manager. And, you know, I've always said, you know, back to when he was at Arsenal, I think him, Murta, Saka and Holden all did their co coaching badges at the same time. I really respect that. So, yeah, moving away from that, he said, it's nice to, it's it's been nice to be back around the place. Obviously, I've got a lot of friends that are still here, staff members, people who I haven't seen since I left. So it's nice to be back and to see some familiar faces. But it's also good to be back training with a good group of quality players at a good intensity. It's what I needed at this point. And I'm thankful to Mikel and the whole of the club really for giving me this opportunity. Sometimes it can be difficult for an old player to come back and train with the team, but they've all been great. It's been tough too. I was training on my own. You can train on your own and run as much as you like. But as soon as you get around players, especially good players with quality, it's a different type of fitness. So, yeah, it's been tough, but I enjoyed it. Scrolling all the way down, people went asked about new faces in the change room. It said it still feels the same because I said there's a lot of familiar faces around the place. I'm talking staff members, dinner ladies, the chefs, they're all still here, it's, uh, which is really nice. Obviously, the club itself has changed a bit in terms of the board, the manager and the coaches. But at the academy, there are a lot of the same faces around. Per Mertesacker, obviously in charge and I know him well. So it feels like Arsenal. Um, when asked, Arsenal first contacted Wilshere last month um, about a possible return. Mikel Arteta invited him to obviously train. He also met Edu to discuss a possible link-up, people. Um, he said, Mikel was brilliant. He was easy to talk to. He listened to me and he asked what I needed from the club. It wasn't just Mikel, though. Edu was there. Everyone in the club has been great. They reached out to me to see what they could do. And they followed me through with 
they followed through with it as well. I've just got to make myself available for training whenever they need me, really, whether it be the first team, the 23s or coaching in some capacity. They've been they've been great with the coaching as well in terms of giving me the opportunity. I'm doing my A license at the moment. And, you know, it's a course which is done a lot in the classroom. But the best way to improve yourself as a coach is to get out there and experience coaching, putting sessions on and seeing what works and what doesn't. And they've given me an opportunity with good players. Every coach will say they want to work with good players and I've got an opportunity to gain some experience. I'm looking forward to that. And obviously, but um, Wilshere quashed rumours that he'll obviously be becoming a coach for full-time people. Um, he said, to be honest with you, obviously, I see, wait, and he's also talked about a new deal as well, people. Um, I mean, personally, I think we're going to end up giving you a contract because, you know, again, there's talk of El Nene leaving. He's gone to AFCON. You know, obviously, Partey, we're one in, Partey injury away from a potential crisis. Lokonga's had a couple knocks as well among the season. You're hoping Maitland now is Lokonga to Partey, nothing happens. Xhaka will be back soon, but he's out for a length of time. And just in general, uh, we're down to our bare bones in midfield. So I do think, you know, and everybody knows this in January. So I do hope we bring people in, but I do see them get maybe giving Jack Wilshere a pay as you play deal or something like that. Um, you know, I'm not really for bringing back Wilshere necessarily, um, giving, bringing back Ramsey like you've seen rumours or getting Ox on loan, but you never know. We might be getting the band back together. But he said, to be honest with you, it hasn't. Obviously, I see all the love from the fans. They're asking me if I'm going to get a contract. They say they want me to, which is obviously nice. But I'm just thankful for Arsenal to give it for giving me an opportunity to be around players again, to be around the club. Honestly, I'm just concentrating on getting myself as fit as I as fit as I can physically and being in a good place mentally for January when the window opens and hopefully something comes up. Pardon me. Yeah, and obviously, yeah, man, that's where Wilshere's done. You know, so shout out to Wilshere. And obviously, everyone wants to know. I don't like to see a man down. So hopefully he gets back on his feet. He gets a move somewhere and all of these things. I know we've seen him training in Dubai. We've seen him training, obviously, in England. We've seen him training with Arsenal. We've seen him training with Serie B teams. It's quite sad that someone of Jack Wilshere's quality cannot cannot get a move. I know it's not with for quality. It's the baggage that comes with Jack Wilshere historically. And sometimes the narrative of him not being fit isn't necessarily fair. But I've been through it at, at Lemps, man. So... Yeah, it is what it is, man. That's Wilshire. Yeah, that's Wilshire speaking on potential return, on, on speaking on Arsenal return. But yeah, that's that. What else are you lot saying, people? I see the smoke signals from North London too in January. Bro, I can see it. I can, bro, I can 100% see it as well. I can fully see it, man. I think every, I think a blind man could see it. You could, you could see us trying, trying a thing like that. Uh, where, how do you make a poll on this again? I might as well make a little poll for you lot that are involved. Manager poll. I just want to see you lot sentiment, man. Quick one. Would you give Wilshire a pay as you play contract till end of or would you, well, I can't even put end of the season but yes no not sure leave it at that we'll put the vote in at five minutes so yeah please make sure you're taking part in that voting as well for those of you that are not subscribed or following please make sure you stick around after this 30 second break so yeah man is what it is. We can all see it coming. I mean, to be fair, if you bring in, I think we need two proper centre mids, anyways. If you could bring in those two and you get Wilshire on the pairs you play just to cover your backs, I don't mind that really and truly. But again, you know, for me, you should never go back to your ex in it. The, the, the relationship is gone. It was great, you know, but. We should we just need to leave it where it was with Wilshen now, man. I, I, you know, he's the one player I would do it for. You know, I would bring back, you know, he's the one player I would go against everything for. But yeah, man, there's yeah, it just just gotta leave it alone. We've just got to move on as a club. I didn't think he should have left anyways. I think he psyched himself out, but it is what it is, man. He's 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 gone, it's part of the past. Let's get people that are with this, you know. I all I all I'm all for him being around the squad and you know, training with the academy, doing all of these things, potentially even playing for the under 23s just to keep fit. You know, I think United Sam Paul McShane, that could be good for us. A little experienced guy there, you know, all of these things. I don't mind him getting a pay as you play deal, but I don't think we should be doing it. We just need to leave the past. In the past, people. But if there's anyone I'm doing it for, I'm doing it for Super Jack, man. Again, everything logic goes out the window when it comes to him, man. I'm extremely biased when it comes to Jack Wilshere. Jack Wilshere and Gennabry are the single reasons I'm sitting here. And they started this whole, for me anyways, the YouTube stuff. And now it, it subsequently the Twitch stuff. Because I was very peed off when he went on loan to Bournemouth. And obviously Gennabry went to the Olympics because I could see what, what was happening was happening. So 
in a while, in a, in a way, if they, if that didn't happen, yeah, man. To be fair, he psyched himself out, you know. Emre didn't say, Emre said you weren't in my plans, but you could stay. He said, I want to bust out. I can't disagree. Sometimes I think Wilshere has come across as a bit insecure because there was a year, I think we signed El Nene in January and we signed Xhaka. And I think that's when he went to Bournemouth because he said the gaffer brought two two man two players in. And I thought to myself, if you're scared of Xhaka and you're scared of El Nene, then maybe you're not for it. But he went to be fair when he did come back from that Bournemouth loan. What was that? That season we played Atletico Madrid and that I think he was quite good. He stayed fit in that. You know, sometimes I think the man stayed fit. It's just the 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 typical conventional things that I said about Wilshere goes against him. Out of Wilshere, Ramsey and Alex Oxley Chamberlain, bro, I can't lie to you. Like, I'd I'd rather bring back Wilshere. You know, I would probably the logical thing to do is probably bring back Ramsey, but I'd bring back Jack. I just think Jack and Partey in the midfield, I get something there. I'm not really convinced with Ramsey and Partey, if that makes sense. Definitely not Alex Oxley Chamberlain. And where Alex is concerned, I can't lie, he's 28. What is he? I was chatting with my brethren yesterday. He was saying Ox is a winger. My next brethren is saying he's a midfielder. So my other brethren and me are saying he should be doing that right back, really. So what is he at 28 years of age? He's going to come to Arsenal and do the same things. I don't want any more players that want to discover themselves, want to find themselves. I don't want to be a care home, you know. Don't get twisted. It can, If you're a good player, it can be of mutual benefit. You need to come here, get some love and start playing well for us. But with respect to, to, to Ox, you know, Ox probably needs a move more than we need him. Wilshere needs Arsenal more than we need him. Ramsey, again, Ramsey's difficult. You're linked with Newcastle and these things and, and all these things. I don't think the loan fee, you know, you're going to have to pay part of his wages Juventus are going to ask for. I don't think it's worth it where Aaron Ramsey's concerned as much as I'm full of admiration for the Welsh midfielder and FA Cup winner at this club, people. So it is what it is in that regard. What else is I'm going to get into the transfer news in a minute, people. Just want to see who's disliking my YouTube vids again because... Same old two duns. We move, man. We move. I'm actually trying to pattern some, you know, le to next week's a very jam-packed week. I'm trying to pattern some some stuff for you lot people. Trying to get some collabs and all those sort of things. I know tomorrow it's a jam-packed day because I'm going to be on, on Twitch at the same time. So that's 10 a.m. I'll be on YouTube as well. Um, and then I'm back over on Twitch for in the afternoon for two other bits of content, people. So go and check out your YouTube schedule. I mean, your Twitch schedules. Uh, I think I'm going to be playing Football Manager and then PSG versus whoever PSG are playing. I'm going to be doing a watch along for that. So make sure you're there. Saturday, I should be doing Watford, Liverpool on, on, on Twitch. So here I'm undecided, but I'll probably move over to YouTube just to balance things out for Brentford, Chelsea, if I am to do that. And then, yeah, man, obviously Monday we've got, we've, you know, we've got Palace and Friday we've got Villa. So, yes, we're getting back on the, on the, mo on, on the motor people. And obviously, check out the other bits of DG content on, on, on YouTube, man. I can't lie, I grind for you. Like, I cut up individual clips because you're like, I don't have time to watch all of it. Could you make some of the clips for, uh, further? I'm mean, smaller for me. And I always go that step further for you guys, man. I said, no, I can't lie. So, yeah, man, Ox could be an eight if he could stay fit for more than five games. But the thing is, yeah, I think that as well. But it's like, where are we getting that from? Like, why do we believe that? Because on the same hand, you can say he's quite immature in the middle of the park. Let me see what you lot are saying for this, this poll so far, though. It's not even over yet. But so far, ooh, just being edged. 57%. I would have thought more people would have said no, to be honest. Make sure you vote if you haven't. But I would have thought more people would have said no. But 57% have said yes to giving Will Share pay as you play deal. 43% of you have said no. And nobody's voted for not sure. So it's one where you lot are voting with absolute clarity, you know, <laughs> really and truly. So I respect it still. But yeah, man. With that being said, should we look at some of the, you know, Transfer rumours. Let's just go around. You know, I don't know if there's anything in speci specifically, but let's just see what's going on in the in this world, people. Let me just close one, two things, because it's just going to get mad. Let's go back. So, yeah, let's start. Let's start with the BBC column, man. Sentiment running high, can't lie. Facts. Sentiment's hella high, bro. But it's like, ox. When I think of Ox, like you said, you know, I think he's he's a midfielder for me. He can drive and all these things, but you know, can he distribute? Can he retain the possession? You get me? Like when I look beyond that and what I see, this like, are you really a centre mid? Are you what Arsenal need? Probably not. But anyways, looking at, I think I honestly think Ox needs to get on his agent, try get that Newcastle move, or go back to Southampton. Really, you know, return to Southampton. There's a thing there for you, you know. Really, 
It won't surprise me if Ox goes on loan or leaves in January and you see Ox put in some real performances. You know, we've got to remember this is a World Cup year. You're going to see some booky things with certain players you don't rate doing a madness, people. But looking in, in relation to the transfer news, Newcastle. I feel like it's Newcastle, Newcastle, Newcastle where the Twitch streams are concerned. But fair play. Big up the Newcastle fans if you are out there. Bro, hella sentiment. Arsenal fans always talk about... um. We're, we're, what's the words? We're, we're, we're mediocre. We love sentiment, but they love it as well, bro. Our Arsenal fans ride for some shit players, compare them to legends, you know, willing to consistently persist, like even the club, like even though Bellerin's left, Leno looks like he's leaving, Xhaka wanted to stay. You've never got the vibe that the club has made these lots of futures for them, really. But anyways, Newcastle's new owners plan to look to Germany in an attempt to mirror the success of Jurgen Klopp and Thomas Tuchel in England. Apparently, Chelsea's Timo Werner is a top target, along with Bayern Munich and German centre-back Sule. Um, bit harsh, but Barcelona's Brazilian midfield flop Coutinho and a German manager such as, such as Lucien Favre. So, again, that's from Blind. I know a lot of you, when I talk about Blind reports and stuff, you'll always sit there and say they're not the most creditable and all of these sort of things. So, yeah. Um, let's see. Newcastle shake once once Germans, as you look can see here, people. Apparently on on Monday it was Lucien Favre and Ralph Rangnick, the two former Bundesliga coaches, were considered top candidates for the Newcastle job in the English media people. And they are they'll be two very good job, two very good players, um, very good managers to be honest with you, um, and one that the players will probably relish playing under. According to information from Sports Blin, his name does not appear in the contract, but that that but that of the large Saudi private private fund which reports to the crown prince almost 300 million euros were paid for 80 percent of united shares um i don't know what that means again google translate bin salman has no fixed budget for newcastle that means there is no limit bin salman also didn't want to step in to sell the club for profit in a few years time that means he wants to build the best team in the world apparently he loves football in the english league he's convinced of german staff and again he wants to be like them lot there so yeah people it's scary man Apparently, he also has clear wishes. He would like to buy Dortmund's Erling Haaland straight away. He would have the money, but he knows his club still has to grow in terms of sport. Again, this is why I say to you, where Newcastle's concerned, they need to grow commercially. You know, you can probably imagine there's going to be a lot of Newcastle propaganda in Saudi Arabian presses and whatnot. Where football or the Premier League's concerned, Newcastle is going to get a big push, logically speaking, as it should. When it grows commercially, when you get the right directors of football and the coaching staff, you'll be in a position where the club, what you're doing off the field, will correlate on the field and they might be in a position where they could buy a Haaland or an Mbappe and all these things which is quite scary and obviously it said a bunch of other names there so we'll have to see what that one is saying people as you look now apparently the the mad price have contacted the representatives of Leicester City's French centre-back Wesley Fofana about the possibility of making a move for the 20-year-old who always talks about wanting to play for Real Madrid people. So we'll have to see what happens in that regards. But again, I do. if I look at that Newcastle team immediately, they need centre-halves. Like Again, I like Jamal LaSalle's character, but he's not good enough. And to be honest, he's probably the best out of all of them. The rest are quite frankly crap. You know, I don't really rate the Bradcar. They need a striker because they don't score goals. I know Wilson's had, in, had injuries issues and whatnot but goals keep you in goals win you leagues they keep you in positions and all of these sort of things and to be fair with you Newcastle I think well last time I checked they could spend about 200 million including wages so that's enough w wiggle room at least for Newcastle fans if they move away from the euphoria and all these players if they were offered prior to the takeover positions to address I think they can do that in the summer I don't mean January and the summer but for what it's worth, Barcelona are keen to offload Coutinho in the January transfer window and Liverpool are open to bringing the 29-year-old back to Merseyside. Rabiot's been linked with Newcastle. Apparently, they're open to selling him. Juventus, that is, open to selling the 26-year-old to obviously um, fun moves for Van der Beek and, you know, Tuchamani as well, who's a very good player. You've seen him win, win the Nations League with France. You know, I don't think he's nothing like Kante, but he's a better partner for Paul Pogba where France are concerned than Rabiot. And I've watched him a lot for Bordeaux. I watched him for Mon I've watched him for Monaco. He actually scored against his former club, Bordeaux, the other day before the international break. I still think there's a lot he needs to work on, but I think Tuchamani He's a serious player. Physically, he's with it. You know, he can put in a tackle. His passing can be a bit inconsistent, but he's got a good range of passing. He does like to try and get forward and score and things like that. I think his future is a number six and I think he'll be a good signing. You have heard Real Madrid won him, though. Imagine Real Madrid with him, Pogba, Camavinga, before we even talk about potentially Mbappe and, and Benzema. So it seems like, you know, French Revolution is taking place in the Spanish capital. Um 
But I can't blame. He'll be a great signing for Juventus as well. He, again, this is a signing where I get peed off with Arsenal because you could have got him a couple of years ago from Bordeaux. And if he develops, well, they're talking about 60 million euros for him and them things there. So it, you get me, you know, you move for him, you move for Kareem Adeniemi, you sign these guys before they start getting euphoria and all of these sort of things, people. I don't really want to talk about killing Mbappe, but for what it's worth, Pochettino says the Liga club will do everything possible to keep him, obviously, with his contract running out and, you know, his dad's had something to say. He's had something to say. His mother's had something to say. Benzema's been tapping him up. The whole of Real Madrid been tapping him up. All of PSG have been speaking. He, does does Mbappe have any pets? Because at this moment, his dog's gonna, his dog and cat are gonna have an interview, and maybe even his grandma's gonna have an interview as well. Or, or the, you know, his first school teacher. Everybody's getting an interview. Obviously, they're gonna do as much as they can to keep the lad. He's a, he's gonna be one of the best players. He is one of the best players in the world. He's gonna be potentially the best player in the world at a time. And again, he's got his best years in front of him, and you're losing him for free, which is a L. You know, I mean, Real Madrid, I mean, PSG showed everyone how to do, how to exploit the free transfer market last season, um, last summer, sorry, with a couple of, you know, Donnarumma, Ronaldo. I'm sure that Ramos, I'm sure there's a next name I'm missing out, but it is what it is. Um, apparently, AC Milan and Barcelona will be leading, will be leading the clubs trying to sign England attacking midfielder Jesse Lingard on the free transfer. Oh, what? Did one more play up. what? Barcelona, have you not had enough of signing shit, man? As for AC Milan, I don't know what they're smoking there, but it is what it is. And Lingard's running down his deal. Again, a lot of people are running down their deals. And to be honest with you, I think Lingard's an idiot for still being at United. I hope to see you play, but, you know, and, and I know you've been, you know, Southgate still rates you, but you could have got an England call. You could be playing on a regular basis. I get it. You want to be at Man United. It's all you've known. And Ronaldo's returned. But I just feel moving on, really. And United probably did try to sell him, but no one probably wants to pay the fee with the COVID market going on and his wages and all those things, you know. West Ham paid quite an expensive loan fee to take him for a couple of months. But Barcelona and AC Milan will be at the front of the queue to sign Jesse Lingard if he leaves Manchester United on a free transfer. Apparently, he's rejected the offer of a new contract from United last month so he could weigh up his options. Is what it is. He's had one start this season. And to be fair, you knew your game time was going to be limited. He's nothing beyond a squad play. He can't take nobody's space in that team, really. And to be fair, they need to move on from Jesse Lingard. Apparently, Solskjaer wants to keep Lingard and United could yet make an improved offer or even try. They probably need to sell him in January, man. He needs to want to go in January. And as you look, know, people, he can obviously agree moves for free in Jan. So it'd be quite, you know, it'd be quite fun to see what's going to happen. I think Frank Kessier's deal's running down at AC Milan. Pogba's obviously, Mbappe, you've got Lingard, probably a bunch of other players as well, deals running down. So it's going to be an interesting one. And, you know, Wenger did say a couple of years ago, the free transfer market was going to be something where people take advantage of, man. I'm hearing the Newcastle FFP limit will be up to 190 million this financial year. And I mean, that's more than enough wiggle room to do significant business for Newcastle, in my opinion. Um, Monaco, as I said, you know, we've all seen this. Monaco have put a price tag of 60 million euros on the 21-year-old Tuchimani with Real Madrid, as well as Chelsea, Liverpool and Manchester City keen on the player. City, have been, Chelsea, apologies, have been linked with him for the maddest. So I can't see any any of that changing. Rüdiger's link been linked with um, Real Madrid, where again he's been linked with you know a new deal at Chelsea, Bayern Munich, Real Madrid. That would be a fantastic free transfer for Real Madrid, where they're concerned if they can make that happen. Apparently, it, that's all dependent on him agreeing to not get a signing on fee. Where I can't lie, if I'm 28 years of age and I'm going to run down my deal, another free transfer. I can't lie, I'm getting a signing on deal. I'm not a dickhead, you know. Quite a lot of free agents, you know, Lacazette's in, involved. I spoke about this yesterday. I wouldn't mind Arsenal signing the club, Bruce, 22-year-old Dutch winger. He seems like he's a good player from what I can see. He's obviously been called up to, to the Dutch team, to the Holland team, national level, so there's that. United, you know, and Chelsea still fighting for Jules Conde. We know Barcelona are also advancing in talks to sign Pedri. And it says 60 million euros, but I mean, yesterday you saw that they're tying him down for 1 billion in terms of a release clause. Um Oh, it is what it is. I'm not going to read this. Don't know what Hummels is talking about. The grass might not be greener than Dortmund. You're bugging out. PSG could make a move for Florentinas, Dusan um, Vlahovic as a replacement for Kylian Mbappe. I swear Usman Dembele's deals running down at Barcelona. That could be an avenue to explore as well, people. Apparently, Diego Simeone attempted to sign Messi in the summer and has detailed how he tasked um, striker Luis Suarez with sounding out his former strike partner. So it didn't happen, but... That could have been something that was that could that could have been something great. Um, so that's that. Let's go back and see what this transfer stuff is saying. Gold.com transfer news. I had the tab up, 
don't know where it's gone, but let's go back in this people. Can't just be about Brendan Rodgers. Liverpool, I get right. Like, this is some some dodgy ass rumors, you know. Again, let's go all the way up to the top. Kingsley Coleman's been advised to stay at Bayern Munich. We know he's been getting cold feet. This Fabian Blanco, you is sick. The Spanish guy. I'm sure this guy used to be at Valencia. You know, I could I could be gassing. I could be gassing, but I'm sure this guy was at was at Valencia. Fabio Blanco. Could be wrong. I'm sure this guy was at Valencia at a point. Yeah, and I I know this youngster stuff, people. Come on, man. I knew this Don was there. I knew this Donny was there. I knew I knew about this brother. But um, yeah, going back, man, going back. Um, Barcelona interested in the iTech Frankfurt player, um, renewed their interest, you know. Again, he's continuing his development. Um, they look to sign apparently his contract expires in 2023, so it is what it is. He is a decent player and he's one Arsenal should probably be looking at, if I'm honest with you. Um, Liverpool, we've heard, are considering a Coutinho, a Coutinho return. Apparently, Liverpool look like the look of João Felix. Liverpool are, according to this publication, looking into a potential deal for João Felix. The 21-year-old could be targeted by the Reds during the summer of 2022 in a 68000000 million, 93 million euro swoop. And I mean, he hasn't quite done much since that move to, to obviously, Atletico Madrid. So a lot of what we're seeing here, we've talked about already. Wilshere's obviously dismissed retirement. Pardon me. Barcelona advancing with Asu Fati plans to renew his deal. So that's that, you know. Not too many rumours where that's concerned people. Cody, Gabo, if my guy, if they don't get Lang, I'm not, I don't really feel him, you know. I think he's all right, but, you know, I'm open to be being proven wrong, but I'm not the biggest of fans of the guy. Like, he's all right, if that makes sense. But it is what it is. And I think with that, though, if I'm completely honest with you people, there isn't actually anything else to, 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 to go on about, really. So, yeah, man, I'm, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to let you lot get out of here and I'm going to join you lot. Well, come over and join me at 11.30 on Twitch, people. Obviously, yeah, we've sadly had to talk about Davy Brooks. You know, again, once again, on behalf of everyone, we're wishing him a speedy recovery. Lucas Hernandez has his prison case. We've covered Newcastle. We've touched on some transfer rumours. We've touched on Jack Wilshere. We've touched on Phil Folden signing a new deal. One love to everybody that's been here. Please make sure you're checking out your schedule so you're up to date. Um, tomorrow, I'll be back again at, at, at 10. So what Twitch will be 10, 10 a.m. Um, then we're going over to YouTube for 11.30. Um, and then... I think I'm in the afternoon. I'm on. I'm doing football manager, and then obviously um, you've got PSG, and then the next day you've got Watford, Liverpool, and then next week is Champions League. Forgive me if I'm wrong. So it's jam packed. So you're gonna have a lot of content on YouTube and Twitch. You know you're gonna get your Champions League watch alongs, your normal content. You're gonna get some collabs and link ups if I can. You're gonna get your FM content. So yeah, man, I appreciate everybody that's been joining me as we look to build this up. So yeah. Also, please make sure you're checking out the information. You know, deluded guna04. Make sure you're following me on if you're not going to do anything, you know, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Twitter, D Guna04 on Snapchat. You know, as in forget the deluded, just the D and then the Guna04. Yeah, man, make sure you're taking part in all the socials. You are all always on to me about a Discord group. So I'm gonna get onto that as well because apparently that's how you grow on Twitch. But yeah, man, one love to everybody that's here, one love to the 20 people that are locked in at this current moment. So yeah, man, enjoy the rest of your day, whatever. Open up another tab, hit the like button if you're not going to be there for me over on YouTube. And yeah, I'm going to love and leave you lot, man. It's always a pleasure speaking to you lot, and I appreciate everyone who's joined me this early morning. But for now, DG. <laughs>